Joe Biden is losing his mind. The closer the election draws, the more unstable Joe Biden is looking, which is not good news for the Democrats' hopes of clinching victory in November. Sky News All-Stars Kristen Tate, Rita Panahi and James Morrow expose Joe Biden's latest humiliating stumbles. Joe Biden is no stranger to merciless mocking, but as the presidential race becomes serious, pundits are deeply concerned about the president's ability to see his campaign through. Sky News All-Star Rita Panahi exposed Joe Biden's familiar gaffe of mixing up countries. And let's start with the leader of the free world, President Joe Biden, who is again mixing up countries, regions, days. Here he keeps calling Gaza Ukraine. In the coming days, we're going to join with our friends in Jordan and others in providing airdrops of, of uh, additional food and supplies into Ukraine and seek to continue to open up other avenues into Ukraine, including the possibility of a Marine Corridor. He's just not all there. And, and Sky News All Star James Morrow highlighted the damage control by the White House after that humiliating gaffe then called it Mexico, you almost had to feel sorry here then for White House spokesman John Kirby, who had to do another cleanup on Isle Joe. <laughs> when the president said we were airdropping to Ukraine twice, he meant Gaza, correct? He just misspoke. He was referring to Gaza. Yeah, he was referring to Gaza, Gaza. Now, anyway, gosh, now. I'm and it's not only comical word stumbles that Biden is struggling with. Immigration is a huge issue that's front and centre of voters' minds, says Sky News All-Star Kristen Tate. Well, Biden can't do that. His record has been a complete disaster. At this point, you have six in ten Americans who doubt his mental capabilities. His record, uh, his approval rating, rather, is at a near record low. Only 37 percent of Americans approve of his handling uh, of the nation as a whole. And then immigration is now the top issue for voters nationwide. And that's a complete disaster. I mean, we have got more illegal immigrants who have been arrested in this country under Joe Biden than the entire populations of 36 U.S. states. So this is a president who cannot run on his track record. That is simply not an option. So again, they are trying to create chaos and they are playing to their base of dedicated leftists at this point who don't even care about the track record. They just hate Donald Trump so much and the Democrats are hoping that they can mobilize that base to the extent that they can win just by getting them to the ballot box. And that's mostly just single single, white, unmarried women, basically cat ladies. They're just going to try to get all the cat ladies in the country to the ballot box because they can't win on trying to sell this administration's track record to the general population. It's been a disaster. That was seen clearly during Biden's latest visit to the border where he was stumbling around, trying to keep up with his tour guide. Joe Biden has had a shocker week with his latest gaffe making it very clear that he is not calling the shots. The president stopped himself from answering media questions because he'll quote, get in trouble. I better not start the questions, I'll get in trouble. What's your message for Thank Super you. Tuesday Thank voters? You. Everyone so Super Tuesday, Thank say you. do you have a message Thank for you voters? Guys. Thanks, come on. Thank This sparked an avalanche of abuse on social media, with voters calling him pathetic. Joe Biden made another reference to being controlled by his staff in a subsequent speech, this time referring to drop dead hour. With that, I'm going to turn this over to Lael, the director of National Economic Council. But I'm supposed to leave for a meeting with, meeting with the business roundtable on the telephone. 
but I'm going to hang around and listen a little bit. So with your permission, I'd like to stay a few, and I, my, my staff will tell, tell me when the drop dead hour occurs. And then Joe Biden had another one of his infamous run-ins with the teleprompter. Fair competition is the key to my economic vision. To build an economy from the middle out and the bottom up, not the top down. And it's working. Wages are up more than prices. Unemployment has reached historic lows. Families are finally getting a little breathing room. And following that, he made a bizarre reference to the cookie monster when discussing shrinkflation. In fact, some of the small snack companies, you won't uh, and think you won't even notice what they're doing. Uh, when they charge you just as much for the same size bag of potato chips, only has a hell of a lot fewer chips in it. I'll tell you what, i tell you who did notice, the cookie monster. <laughs> he pointed out cookies are, his cookies are getting smaller, paying the same price. <laughs> I was stunned when I found out that's what actually happened. All of these gaffes are translating to historic low polling numbers for Joe Biden, according to Republican strategist Colin Reid. There was a really alarming poll that came out over the weekend from the New York Times of all places that showed six out of 10 Biden supporters in 2020 believe President Biden is too old to serve. That's not conservatives. That's not Republicans. That's his own supporters. And if I'm if I'm in team Biden's camp right now, those alarm bells, they're sounding and they're sounding loudly. And Joe Biden's political rival Donald Trump is rubbing salt into his wounds, launching a serious warning to the president advising him to fight his own fights. Uh, Letitia James and Fani and uh, deranged Jack Smith, what they should be doing is fighting violent crime. And that would lead me to the end. I will say that President Biden, number one, stop weaponization. Fight your fight yourself. Don't use prosecutors and judges to go after your opponent to try and damage your opponent so you can win an election. Our country is much bigger than that. The other thing I say to President Biden, close the borders now.